you know, it's nothing like doing a story about the government saving their own people, <laughs> as if we never seen that before, right? We see it all the time. We see them do things for certain people in this country that they don't do for nobody else. <laughs> and here's one of those stories coming out on CNBC, May 27th. 2019, federal and local governments have poured $5 billion into buying out flood-prone homes. Who are they doing that for, ladies and gentlemen? Mm -mm -mm. Just take a wild guess. Uh -uh -uh. And the effort is only getting more expensive. So when they get in trouble, oh, we'll just go in there and just buy them out. Oh, don't worry, federal government to the rescue. <laughs> As it's been for decades, see, uh, centuries, I should really say. So this is, you, you all heard about the flooding that's going on. It, it has really been horrific in the Midwest and it's been really bad, really bad. So they are buying the residents out like the good old federal government has been doing all along in the great country of America. <laughs> great for some, not for all. So this is Mosby, Missouri. And the flooding is about to get worse. Just when you thought it was bad, it is going to get worse. So yes, it's going to be a lot more expensive since they're buying people out. Sure don't buy nobody out in the hood. Residents of this small riverside town have become accustomed to watching floods swamp their streets, transform their homes into islands, and ruin their floors and furniture. Elmer Sullivan has replaced his couch, bed, and television his torn up water buckle floorboards, and he put a picket fence against the front of his house to cover up a gap left by water's washed out parts of the stone foundation. I just don't want to mess with it anymore. I'm 83 years old and I'm tired of it. And I just want to get out of it, Sullivan said. Finally fed up, Sullivan, and nearly half of the homeowners in Mosby signed up for um, this 19, I'm uh, sorry, not 19, but 2016 program, which the government will buy them out and demolish their properties and rather than pay to rebuild them. So before the government would go in because I knew people like this. Oh, I got a new home every two years, every year. You know, I knew people like that here in my state. They lived in those rural areas. It was prone to getting flooded and they would literally get a brand new house every single year because it would be destroyed by some natural disaster. Well, the government is no longer doing that. So those people are getting bought out and with that money, they can go somewhere and relocate. Now, I'm going to ask this question again. How many in the Black community have been bought out by the government? <laughs> How many? If anybody in your family been bought out by the government, you know, their home bought out, post it in the comment section. Okay, they're still <clears throat> waiting for offers joining thousands of others across the country in a slow moving line to escape from flood prone homes. Patience is wearing thin in Mosby, a town with fewer than 200 with a core of lifelong residents, more than likely a bunch of old timers there and some young newcomers drawn by the cheap prices of its modest wood frame homes. Residents watched nervously this past week as high waters again threatened the town. It is frustrating because here we are, we're coming through a wet season 
Yeah, but you continue to live in those towns and you know there's always a wet season. What does that say about you? Mm, lie IQs at work again, y'all. There's a chance that we could possibly flood and we're still waiting, said Jason Stukesbury, an alterman who oversees the town's effort to curb flooding. It's not a good situation, but what are you going to do? It's the government process. And ladies and gentlemen, some of these towns have been in existence now for centuries. And they've been flooding like that <laughs> all this time. These are not newly cropped up towns. A lot of these towns like Mosby, they've been around probably back during when slavery was going on if you go back and research it. Over the past three decades, federal and local governments have poured more than $5 billion into buying tens of thousands of vulnerable properties across the country, according to the Associated Press analysis of data from the Federal Emergency Management Agency, FEMA, and the Department of Housing and Urban Development. The AP analysis show those buyouts have been getting more expensive with many of the costliest coming in the last decade after strong storms pounded heavily populated coastal states such as Texas, New York, and New Jersey. This year's record flooding in the Midwest could add even more buyouts to the quote. Mm. Boy, if these stories didn't come out, you wouldn't even know about this kind of stuff. Regardless of the risk, the buyouts are voluntary. Homeowners can renew taxpayer subsidized flood insurance policies indefinitely. Ladies and gentlemen, can you get your insurance policy indefinitely or do you have to renew it every single year? I know I do. I got to renew that shit every year. I don't have no policy that's indefinite. Um, with more extreme weather events, flooding is going to become more and more of an issue. And there will be more and more properties that are at risk of total loss or near total loss, said Democratic U.S. Rep. Peter De, um, DeFazio of Oregon, chairman of the House Transportation and Infrastructure Committee, which has jurisdiction over FEMA. Then the question is, are we just going to keep selling them insurance and building in the same place? What you've been doing that for centuries. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, look at how many times I know, like I said, I know people <laughs> that got new homes all the time because of natural disasters. And this stuff has been going on for sometimes a, a whole century or even longer. <clears throat> and what they should have done when they saw the towns were prone to flooding, if you're gonna buy people out, they have to know or relocate the town instead of letting people continue to live in places like Moby. Look, they opened up in this article by saying it floods all the time there. This just didn't start happening a few years ago. It's been happening since Mosby been in existence. But they just keep sitting there and they won't move. Those are not areas you should be living in. But, you know, you can't tell some of these people anything. They don't want to hear it. Okay. So DeFazio wants to expand and revamp a buyout process that he describes as um, inefficient and irrational. He's backing a proposed pilot project that would give homeowners a break on their flood insurance premiums as long as they agree in advance to a buyout 
that would turn their property into green space if their homes are substantially damaged by a flood. So in other, in other words, they're going to demolish those homes and they're going to render that land back to nature, which they should have done long before now. But, you know, that lie IQ kind of slows things down. You, you know how it is, y'all. <laughs> Buyout programs rely on federal government money. Isn't that what we get accused of? Always mooching off of the federal government. And you, you see who's doing the mooching, right? It's not us. Buyout programs rely on federal money distributed through the states, but they generally are carried out by cities and counties that end up owning the properties. Mm -mm -mm. Most buyouts are initiated after disasters, but Congress has become more proactive. Appropriations for FEMA's pre-disaster mitigation grant program. Did you know that existed? We don't know this stuff. Which funds buyouts and other precautions such as elevating homes before disaster strikes have risen from $25 million in 2015 to $250 million this year. Yeah, the disasters have been really bad, y'all. After Superstorm Sandy pummeled New Jersey and New York in 2012, I will never forget that, Duke University graduate school student Devin McGee researched what happened to hundreds of Staten Island homeowners who took buyouts. She found that all but two of the 323 homeowners she tracked relocated to other areas with higher poverty levels. Three quarters remained on Staten Island. About one fifth moved to homes that still were exposed to coastal flooding hazards. When people take buyouts, sometimes the money they are given on their homes is not enough to buy a compatible home in a low risk area, said McGee, who now works as a coastal management specialist for an engineering and consulting firm. Wow. So these folks get buyouts, y'all. They get buyouts. Located just north of Kansas City, Mosby began it's railroad town in 1887. So they have been in existence since 1887, y'all, and expanded with coal mines in the early 20th century. At one time, it had a school, bank, grocery store, and lumber yard. Those are gone now, and the trains merely pass by. In 2015, financial strains led the town to eliminate its small police force. So these are these little rural towns that are just sitting there, been sitting there for a long time and been flooding all this time. Like I said, those towns found out they flooded probably back in the 1800s. And those people just kept remaining there. They just kept sitting there. Sullivan hopes to get 28000 for his home. He would move near his sister in Northeast Missouri, but he's getting impatient. I'm just about ready to tell them, take it and shove it, he said, sitting on the concrete porch of the white wooden house where she's lived for the past 36 years. Tammy Kilgore explains that everybody's just really on edge and ready to leave. Wow, 36 years of dealing with floods. Yeah, I don't think I would have let it go 36 years, but damn, the floods, I'm tired of dealing with them. I really am, she said. I think they should have bought out this town a long time ago. Well, at least you get bought out. 
You know, when I was growing up in the city of Philadelphia, when they decided to put the airport in and that whole area where Philadelphia International Airport was, there were it was a black community over there. When they put that airport in, they ran them people out, demolished the homes. They didn't get a dime. They didn't get bought out. They literally got nothing. And they tried to sue the city for years. I, I, I mean, I think they were trying to do lawsuits for like up to 10 years. It really went on. It was a battle between the city and those residents for a long time. But ultimately, they ended up with nothing. No government came and bought them out. But please tell me what you think, ladies and gentlemen. Please leave your comment and subscribe. Don't forget to hit on the notification bell. And I'll see you on the next video. Peace, family.